That's hey there. <laughs> Welcome to MJT Reviews. I'm joined with my jury. First off, it's Lamb. Lamb is going to react <laughs> to Iceland. The name is um, Hatrid Mansigra mm -hmm. by Hatari Iceland. He's going to review it. So let's have a look at what he thinks. Okay, one, two, here we go. Ooh, is that Mange from Batman? <laughs> There's him, Sabine. Here's what I really think of Iceland. Okay, what did I just watch? I watched it and I'm just very perplexed. I must say that it's... Okay, lucky it ended. What was that? What did I just watch? That was the funniest reaction I've ever seen from you. Oh my goodness. I've never listened to this style before not saying the song, man. What was that? It looks like the, the trailer for um, Resident Evil. My goodness, you know, Bane uh, appeared at the beginning making some, you know, shaving and tattoos and stuff. And, you know, what, what's wrong with that guy? Um, <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, I don't understand um, a single thing. But I, I don't want to, to criticize, but, man, not my type. Not my type. But uh, I couldn't understand what, what, they, what was the message that they want to convey. Did you read anything somewhere? Did people say anything about it? Or, oh, it's hard to understand. I don't know, um, man. It's going to be very controversial. Um, I can't wait to, you know, watching other people react to this song. Uh, couldn't really feel the melody and uh, some parts of it. He, he didn't actually sing. He was like screaming. Right. What do you think of that, the screaming? It's you know scared the hell out of me, but uh, <laughs> uh, uh, 
Yeah, it it it, it reminds me of um, you know American wrestling. Like before the the match, they'd be like, uh, "Behold, <laughs> AJ Styles." Ah, oh, damn it! Like yeah. the Hulk Hogan guy, isn't there like some Hogan guy? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like like. Like I used to watch, you know, American basketball you know, before the game. You know, the in, the way they introduce players, you try to be, you know, um, epic. That's what they do. But this is way more than that. So we'd it, never see Lamb at a screamo concert. What? We'd never see you at a heavy metal scream concert. No, because I don't think that's my type. What and about? Do you know if this is some kind of music that you hear in Vietnam at all? Are there artists that are like this? I think there might be somebody like these, but I don't listen to these type of music, and I don't think it's popular at all. But maybe you know, it's is a a big competition, and he's he's actually representing his country. So I think definitely he might has you know a certain amount of audience, and maybe this is a new type of music that I need to put some more attention on. Yeah, it actually makes me quite curious, like about the style of the music, and 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 the audience. I, I, I'm very curious, and I can't wait to see how other people react. Yeah, it's it's gonna be a very interesting uh, performance. It's totally different. Mm. Can I show you something um, you could react to? It's of a. I just sent you a, a link on the chat no. thing. Um, it's of them. And this is before the Icelandic national selection. So it was an inter it was like a TV show where they interviewed all the artists mm -hmm. to, in one room to talk about their song. And mm -hmm. so the, they're the ones that are in tracksuit pants. Undirbúningur keppninnar gengur samkvæmt áætlun. Ja, einmitt það. Is this even real? What's wrong with that guy? Man. So some people think that they're the ultimate troll artists and that they're trolling everyone. Yeah, that, that, that what I was, I was thinking. But you know, the way he, he, he kept that until the end and, and the guy next to him, you know, I think he, 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 he tried so hard not to laugh himself, but man, so I, I don't know, I don't know, man. You've, they've just left you completely confused. Yeah, so confused. I'm so confused. Do you think that they'll make the final? Um, man, the, the, the way that they made it all the way out of Iceland, <laughs> the country, so I think anything can happen. <laughs> yeah, this guy actually, you know, I think he beat... Um, other um, Iceland um, singers to go all the way out of the country and go to Israel. So I think anything can happen. Man. Yeah, they win. The preparation <laughs> is going as planned, man. So, yeah. Oh, well, that was very entertaining. Thanks a lot, Lam. Okay. Atrid Mansigra by Hatari. Iceland. We got Elise Turner. So Elise, hi, Hello. welcome. How did you song? I'm thinking it's Hatrid Hatrid Mansigra. Okay, I got no clue. I, I'm just like, oh, I'm gonna write it down and not say it. That was my plan. Like Atari, it makes me think Atari, like the you know, like the console, but anyway. <laughs> That is totally unrelated to my review of this song. <laughs> all right, not sponsored at all. Sorry, Mitch. <laughs> okay, so we have male and female singers in this video, which is a really cool mix. Um, we're starting off with the males in the verses. He's doing that, like, screamo -y thing, but to one note, which is, like, an E. Um, e, e the E is the note, yeah. Um, and then in the... Uh, choruses you've got the vo female vocals coming in with their like little i don't know softer sound i guess compared to a screamo vibe in terms of um vocal range we're going from e4 to c5 so that's under an octave 
Um, where's my piano? Need to see. That's just over the span of a chord. So that's six notes essentially, six white notes difference. That's a really small range, but it's, you know, like I guess it makes sense if they're sticking on um, sticking on the E for the, the verses and then doing some funny stuff for the choruses with the females. It's like it's not bad to have a small range. It's just interesting that it is so small. Um, then we've got um, a split uh, key and a modulation. So we start off in G major for, uh, for the... No, we start off in E minor for the verses. It's a minor tonality in the verses, and then the choruses have, like, a major tonality, which means it's the relative um, key of G major. And then right at the end, we modulate for the chorus into a B flat major. So we go up a two, one, two, three semitones. Sorry, I'm forgetting my, my technicalities today. <laughs> Um, so that's cool. You've got a lot going on in terms of um, what keys you're in, uh, and I think that's pretty fun. Um, in terms of tempo, we're at 4-4 uh, and 110 beats per minute. So it's kind of like a steady, like a, I want to like relate it to like a horse walking, but I think that's a really weird way to think mm. about it. I know there's like, a term called an adante. Would you say that that's kind of an adante pace? Oh my goodness, I haven't done music theory for so long. I think um, they call that a like walking I, pace or something. I know it's Italian. <laughs> um, that's a good reference. That's a good way to say it though. A, walking a much pace. better way to say it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe I'll do that for all my future videos. I'll like, here's a BPM and then brackets what it is in Italian <laughs> in terms of theory. And then in the leaf, walking horse. <laughs> Walking horse. How many horses are walking? Uh, actually, yeah, it's just above a Dante because the Dante is technically 76 to 108 beats per minute. So we're at 110. So, okay. you know, we're about that area. Um, a Dante moderato is technically what we're in. So, you know, good on you, knowing your <laughs> terminology. You're beating me. I'm supposed to be the musicologist. <laughs> I'm a fraud. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, you can just tell how much I do by ear instead of doing the theory now. <laughs> um, in terms of chords, we have five chords. So um, our E minor is kind of what we sit on in the verses. And then in the choruses, we use all five of the chords. So E minor is number one. Um, no, sort of. We've got too many keys. Um, it, I, I did my numbers in G, G major. So we've got our E minor for the, 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 the verse and then our chorus we have E minor, C, A minor, A minor, G and D. So that in the A, E and G major is one, two, four, five and six. Yes. Too many, too many keys to keep track of. <laughs> uh, in terms of instrumentation, we kind of got like a very – stripped back instrumentation we have our classic vocals male and female uh and then we have like a hundred percent synth for the sounds that are melodic and an electronic drum kit that's it synth drum kit vocals and that kind of works they've got a really like um i don't want to say electronic but it sort of is it's like hardcore electronic sound that they got going on um and so that 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 minimalistic uh setup works really well for them okay let's break down the form our intro is super weird we have three and a half plus four because there's sort of two sections the first bit's a bit more like um timeless and the second one's a bit more beat like beat driven so you've got um 7.5 bars at the start. Bit odd for the half bar, but, you, you know, it's there. And then in the video, you add another bar because of the razor, um, like the hair shave razor. Um, so you're still getting that half bar regardless of if you're listening to the recording or the video. Um, first one has 15 uh, bars, which, you know, a bit weird that you minus one from the 16, but it's okay. Uh, you've got a chorus for eight, and then you've got first two for 16, chorus for eight, and then chorus 
for another eight, so double chorus. Then we've got um, silence for one bar because that's just before the key change. And then we've got our coda, which is a mix of the verse and the chorus to outro the song. Um, so you've got both vocalists going the whole time, uh, basically, and that's 17 bars. So that's our breakdown. And that's pretty cool. Um, I think it's our first song with a proper key change, which surprised me because I was expecting more of that in Eurovision. Mm. Um, because I think that's a really great way to build it up and like have that big massive effect at the end. So that's kind of cool. Um, it's not the sort of song I would have expected it on in the sense of it's kind of a bit more um, screamo-y. And I don't know, I just didn't pick a screamo song to be the one with the first key change to, that we found. <laughs> I, I think I laughed when I first heard it, but not not because it was like cheesy or anything, but I just didn't expect it. Yeah, but it's, it's really cool. Like. It, it's so contrasting that you're like, hey, it kind of works. I didn't, I'm digging that. Um, so, yeah, let's have a look at what the video looks like. Yeah? I say, I'm curious. There's a lot of people okay. in the community saying, oh, finally, a metal song in Eurovision. Mm -hmm. Would you define this song as metal? Because I, I hear dance beats. I, I do hear rock elements. I don't know. Um, I think they're defining metal because of the um, screamo element. Um, so you have a lot of this electronic sort of thing, which gives it that dance electronic sound, which I would associate more with the electronic genre. So maybe it's a crossover between electronic um, metal, but I wouldn't say it's solely metal because I would say argue that a big characteristic of a metal song is that shredding guitar, those big drum kits that really the screaming my voice, which they have. Um, and so I would say maybe it's a hybrid between metal and electronic because it's very, um, I don't know, it's very electronic in the way in which it's played, the way in which it's um, uh, set out in terms of beat and tempo. Um, and, like, that electronic thing kind of gives me a bit of a Frankenstein-y vibe, like it's stitched together, and that kind of works for the aesthetic they've got going on as well. Um, yeah. Great. What do you think of the music video? Okay. So I liked, uh, I critiqued the other video uh, from Denmark about having the sound at the, in the video. I really liked how there was sound at the start of this video with the razor. I thought that it worked really well with the metal -y, uh electronic vibe that they got going on. It's a bit hardcore and you can hear it. And like I was wearing my big headphones and I'm like, oh, don't touch my hair. Um, that was just like my like instant reaction, but you know, it, it was really cool. Um, but then my next question was, are they all dead? They look like Frankenstein characters a bit, which kind of works with the, the stitch together sort of genres. Um, but they kind of, they kind of look a bit without life. Um, that said, I really like the style. I don't know how you could get away wearing those sort of BDSM clothes in Iceland. Is Iceland cold? Does that have ice? But right. I, like, <laughs> but like, I love the style. Like, I I wouldn't wear it to that extreme, but I would totally go for some like latex sort of clothes, a nice latex skirt, maybe a latex like top. Uh, some I've got some nice uh, rocker emo boots. Like, I could rock that. So I really, I really did like their fashion sense that they had going on. Um, so I thought maybe the screamo dude who's like in the verses was raising an army from the dead because they look a bit dead. They look a bit depressing. <laughs> and maybe it's like, I'm just going to raise an army from the dead. They're going to be my army. They're going to be a bit robotic because they're dead. Um, like zombies. Um, and the dance movement sort of reminded me of like a, that robotic steampunk sort of vibe. And that actually reminded me of a band called Steam Powered Giraffe, where in their music videos, they, paint their faces like robots and they have really robotic movements in how they dance and whilst they're singing and everything and so I'm like oh man that's gonna be a crossover probably not intentionally but I you know that was a link that I came up with um and then later on I'm like well maybe it's not an army maybe it's just a rave for those who are already dead or about to die and then when the song ends they actually kind of die and so it's like their final hurrah they're like dying they've got hardly any life left but just enough to do some really robotic dances 
<laughs> um, and then I Google translated as I tend to do. Um, and oh my goodness, I've written and I quote, bloody hell, what a depressing message. <laughs> How off were you? Uh, I like, I didn't know what the message was. I'm just like, man, a bit culty, a bit, bit like uh, army from the dead, you know, sort of. But the message was hate will prevail. Hate will prevail. I'm like, okay, well, I guess you are an, a, 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 like a, a screamer man, you know, fine, but hate will prevail. What we're going with for Eurovision, like where they've got all these songs about love, all these songs about inclusion, all these songs about how we should change the world. It's like, no, <laughs> give up now. Hate will prevail. <laughs> like, I'm all for anarchy. Um, but, but for the sake of chaos, not for hatred. Like, let's not hate on each other. Let's just create chaos of fun. Um, but, because, like, it did make me wonder, was this song a comment on Brexit? Ooh. Because you've got this, like, obviously Brexit is a thing that's happening really soon. I don't know how many days, but it's coming up real close. And that was a vote based on um, misinformation spread about... Um, different races and there's a lot of hatred behind the people well I mean not intentionally but I think what's fueled the exit is people's hatred towards people who are different to themselves and so is it a comment on how uh we as a society act um and how and that's evidenced in the outcome of Brexit it's a very much a fuel of hate behind the actions and the decisions that happen there. Now, it might not be about Brexit. Maybe I'm thinking too deep, but it'd be a really interesting commentary on Brexit if that's the case, um, in which case I might accept your song as an acceptable song despite your message of hate will prevail. But <laughs> I don't know. That just thought it was so depressing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want you to react to something. Well, have a look at, I, I've sent you a video in the message part. Okay. I just wanted you to react to it. This is the, the group. Okay, I'm just refreshing my page. And it's a, it's a national selection. It's like a show before the national selection where they're interviewing all the artists. All right, we got some, some non-English stuff happening. I'm going to read as we go. <laughs> Start that again. Atari, how is the preparation for the finals going? Whisper into a guy's ear. Preparation for the finals are going as planned. Now, okay, I'm going to pause this. Is the preparation for raising the dead army? Is that what they're preparing? And if so, how are they planning that? Like, that is my question. And why is that as planned? Like, surely someone should have flagged this by now. All right, we're going to continue watching. Well, uh, okay. Let's talk about the language you will sing in the finals. Hatari, you are going to sing in Icelandic. Did it ever occur to you to make an English version? I, okay, that should not be the question. That should not be the question at all. Why can't you have it in your own language? It is a, like a competition for Eurovision, including all the countries which have their own languages. It doesn't have to be in English. Even if people are really lazy and don't like Google Translate, it doesn't have to be in English and you should ignore that question. It's like there's questions about, like, what are you wearing to the girls? It should be like that for this song and all the songs in Eurovision. I think so the last watching. time Iceland sang in Icelandic was in 2010 or 2011. Mm. So it's been a long time. Every other time they sing in English. So, yeah. Oh, well, but I don't think that should be a problem. No, definitely okay. not. So should, did they think about making an English version of... Tiro Munsigra. Um, touching glasses, moves glasses down, whisper. I stare into the camera, it's like a little eyebrow wiggle. Iceland NR1. I don't get it. What does that mean? I think they're saying Icelandic, like language number one, like that's our first choice. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, fair enough. Um, Okay, what's next? You won't make want to make any comments about this. Question was staging on the final night. The guy just sits there mute. More eyebrow wiggling as he stares into the camera. Hatari will win Eurovision 2019. It's, is that a Hitler thing? Like, 
Is it because of the hate? Like, maybe because I know the line is hate will prevail. Um, all right. You even practice hand gestures and everything with it. Uh, any comments on social media? You have been interviewed with Israel Media and even been on the front page there. Good on them. How do you handle the media storm that has been surrounding your entry? Can I just say, the chick that's sitting next to the guys in the blue jackets, so Hatari, looks like, um, who's that? That Aussie chick that got like a video made out of her in the nineties, like <sighs> what is it? I'm looking through iTunes. Sorry. <laughs> I know you wanted a reaction. I'm not quick at reactions, clearly. <laughs> Last time you asked me for a reaction video. <laughs> oh, what is it? What is it? Yeah, is it Jackie Lambie? <laughs> Jackie Lambie? No, I should, I should Google it. She's a politician. Like she's a politician, and like they the run in Tasmania. I don't know. The one that talked about like um, like about Sharia law and all that. No. Okay. Politician voice remake song nineties. Nice. Come on, people don't Pauline tell me. Down? Yes, that one. <laughs> that she looks like that. <laughs> <laughs> all right now that that's off my chest i can continue on how do you handle the media storm that has been surrounding your entry is the question we're led with amongst others but you know basically they just want to want an opinion from these guys um looking around as if why would i answer that more whispering there's no eyebrow wiggling this time i'm disappointed atari is thankful for constructive <laughs> criticism <laughs> Another hand gesture? <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> we only got one hand raise. Uh, they noted that they're laughing because of that. Um, have, there, have there been any hiccups in the sem semifinals? More whispering. <laughs> he like always leans like this when he's listening. <laughs> Preparation for the finals are going as planned. Everything is going as planned. They're going to murder everyone. <laughs> <laughs> wow, this is like a natural automatic for them. Maybe you're joining them. My leg just goes, what? Why? Why would you, in response to that, lift your leg up? Maybe she is pulling pants down. So a lot of people are saying that they are just like a troll. They're a trolling entry. Like all they're doing is trying to troll everyone. Um, but Nothing now. wrong with that. I'm That's really how I know the food, right? <laughs> you seem to want to um you seem to be evaluating it like they're kind of in character the whole time, like with the storyline. Do you think? Like you were saying that you think that the whole thing is that they're they got like an army of people who are dead or trying to kill everyone. Maybe they're yeah. keeping this act for the whole time. I think um the the term for that would sort of be like K Fab. Um, which is what happens in wrestling. You have these characters in wrestling and then on social media they follow that storyline outside of the wrestling ring and that keeps it all together and, like, it's a really intense sort of, like, narrative and plot. And so that's really cool. Um, and I think that's a really good way to actually promote it because it's different to what others do. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. It's kind of funny to watch. Um... The commentators have no idea what to do with it. Like the people ask the questions, that's hilarious. I love how serious um, they are. That's the funny thing. Yeah, and they're just like, I, "We want proper answers." Like, no, no, this is this is who we are. Deal with it. <laughs> um, and so, like, the only thing that's odd for them is that they're wearing tracksuits, not like their big like pleather costumes. Maybe so, they're trying to be like in disguise because they're like, <laughs> "No one can know about our army of." Yeah. <laughs> but no, I think it's I think it's kind of cool and it kind of works. Yeah, awesome. What what do you think of this song? Because um, like, do you ever listen to this kind of style of music? Um, well, I I haven't really listened to any Icelandic metal. Um, when I was younger, I used to have a lot of metal on my iPod. I thought I was edgy and cool. Um, nowadays, I'm probably more into like the pop punk emo sort of borderline i don't want a little bit of screamo but probably the most screamo i venture in towards at the moment is bring me the horizon 
because um, they're, you know, they're, they're a pretty good modern band of screamo-y stuff and it's only half screamo, so I can have a bit of a break um, because uh, sometimes a critique I find with screamo is that you're not quite sure what they're saying. And when it's in Icelandic, you've got no idea anyway, so it's okay. Uh, when it's in English, you're like, well, I should know what they're saying. I just got no clue. Um, and so to have the melodic sort of stuff in the between, that gives you a good break because you can understand what's happening again. Um, so, yeah, uh, not as much anymore. Have back in the day, I used to fall asleep listening to Screamo. <laughs> 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 Did you have you ever heard there's a screamo version of Britney Spears Toxic? I'm not surprised. Um, so many covers of Toxic, but that'd be cool. I'd listen to that. I love that. <laughs> oh, well, excellent. All right, well, that means we're done. I am here with Stuart Wilders from ESC Fan TV. Check out ESC, ESC Fan TV. They actually spoke about Iceland uh, in great detail, so check that out. And Iceland, here we go. What do you think, Stuart? Mental, isn't it? It's bonkers. <laughs> uh, if, you're, if, you're into, uh, if you're into metal-inspired uh, BDSM uh, clothing, uh, what can we say about Iceland that hasn't already been said many, many times? It's nuts. Uh, if you liked Lordy for Finland back in uh, 2006, um, this is uh, this is probably the song for you. This is probably the song for you. Um, yeah, I think it could, it could do, one, it'll do one or two things. It'll either win or it won't qualify. Um, I don't think there's any sort of there's no sort of halfway house with this it's either going to fly and be top five possibly win eurovision or it's going to really fail and the way they behave they will create mayhem uh they will create uh uh publicity wherever they go because they are fantastic guys they're really nice people by the way they're really really nice people like lordy were um but they create publicity with the things they do and the things they say my gut feel is this is one to watch. I can see this doing really well in the final. We've never been to Iceland. I'd oh, love to go to Iceland. That. That's another one I'd love just to win, to see it in Reykjavik, you know. Um, and they'd have to have it like in, because usually when they go to the, uh, the spokesperson, it's still sunny outside in Reykjavik when they announce the well, Yeah, I mean, they, they, don't forget in Iceland, they've got some fantastic tourist spots as well plus the blue lagoon we could all you know go and have a cocktail in the blue lagoon oh, one afternoon in eurovision would be amazing yeah so um yeah it's, it's interesting people are going for the rock vibe ike rock definitely and uh dance beat still it's very a dancey song yeah is it rock or is it metal uh but definitely got dance beats in it yeah i mean it's 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 a great combination. It's a winning combination. Um, for those who don't really like that genre, they can still listen to it um, and they'll be mesmerized by them. So, yeah, you package that all together, screams winning combination to me. And what do you think of, of the trolling? You're, you're being entertained at the moment by them? Yeah. I mean, it's they're going to get it and they're going to give it back. And that's what creates publicity. That's why they stay interesting. And good luck to them. If I was their PR manager, I would be telling them to do do it and do more of it. I, I really think they're on the right track to create something quite special going into Tel Aviv. Still two months away, and when they get there, if they're still doing this. They'll still be they'll still be sky high in terms of everyone's thoughts, um, and they hit that stage and blow people's socks off. This could do really well. I'm being entertained as well. I'd say just. Um watch like uh, uh i remember sylvia knight i know it's different kind of trolling but sylvia knight did such a great job at her character and um i, I feel like people were with her until she uh, made a joke about the greeks and then it everyone hated her and so uh, i feel like that's kind of like the limit if you want to be liked <laughs> and i know that yeah 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 i mean you've got to be a bit careful but um there it's like it's light humor that they're portraying and they're funny they're humorous they're it's all in the right uh, context uh in the right manner and and for the right reasons good luck to them i'd love to see cyprus uh, i'd love to see iceland do it 
uh, not Cyprus, Iceland. Sorry about that. I'd love to see Iceland do it. Uh, it's uh, one country we've never been to. It's a great country and they would love to host Eurovision. It's one of the few Scandinavian countries that have never hosted Eurovision. So best of luck to them. And do you remember in the late noughties, they were actually like almost like the Sweden, like they were doing good music entries. Yeah, yeah. Well, they've never been a bad country when it comes to entries. They've just never really got the votes. Um, but Finland proved that you can win Eurovision. You just have to send the right song with the, you know, with the right momentum um, and you know, hitting the right notes, not just musically, but also uh, publicity, publicity wise. And that's exactly what Lordi did. There's no reason to think that they, Iceland can't replicate that. Mm. Okay, excellent. Thanks so much, Stuart, for your take. And thanks to all the jury panellists. Please remember to subscribe to see all the other reviews. And until next time, bonsoir Europe and goodbye. Who will make the cut? Who will make